What drives me to go back every time? It's a drug, it's an addiction, it's the thrill of being able to ride your bike, like I say, as fast as you can, and getting that adrenaline hit. You don't get riding out on the road or just on a Sunday spin with your mates. It's something completely different. I tend to go back to the track over and over again, partly because of the buzz, partly because your friends are there and they're encouraging you to go. I think I'd be lying if I said every time I go, there's not a bit of trepidation about going again. There's always that nervous excitement, anxiety, whatever you want to call it. I always get it when I do something that pushes me out of my comfort zone a little bit, but that's why I do it. It is the adrenaline rush. It is like going fast and fast and fast, and faster every time. Put your knee down, maybe start to slide a little bit, maybe learn how to control your bike in a different way. Yeah, push your limits. What got me into track riding was back in 2005. I bought my husband a track day and I wasn't going to let him have all the fun. So I decided I'm going to join in as well. First got into track riding about three or four years ago. Um, I had an old R1 that I'd been riding on the road and I uh, fancied an upgrade, went to see a friend of mine um, who owns a dealership down the road from here and uh, bought an R1 uh, from him. And when I bought it, uh, it comes with a track day and uh, it was at Silverstone. So he said, oh, I was like, really nervous about doing a track day. So I said to him, I said, no, I'm really nervous about it. He said, no, it'll be fine, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. So I went, um, turned up on the day and uh, I was bricking it. Um, but the bike was there, I was there, so I thought, let's get on with it. And I went round and I was properly nervous the first couple of sessions and then that was it. Um, started to get going, had a bit of coaching uh, from one of the instructors at Silverstone and started to get a bit of a flow going. And the freedom you get on track uh, as opposed to the road, you feel safer, you feel more confident. Um, the speeds are obviously significantly different. Uh, you're not worried about a tractor pulling out in front of you. Um, so just felt a bit free and ever since then it snowballed. Um, I said to James when I came back, um, I really enjoyed that. He said, right, we're going to Spain. Uh, so my next track day was uh, four days out in Europe uh, with him at Almeria, um, which most people will know, and uh, that was even better. I think everything comes from my passion for speed, I would say. I started to drive when I was 12. I couldn't even reach the pedals of the car, so my mom had to put some books. Uh, so I could like reach, uh, I learned how to drive in a muscle car, like a huge, huge car, it was amazing. Uh, I was 12, then around 15, I was already taking my mom's car and racing in, uh, yeah, street racing. And then the same, I was doing 120 kilometers per hour and I was like, this is, no, I need more. I need more power, more speed. And I changed my car for the Yamaha R6. And of course, with more speed, uh, you need to start to learn some skills and abilities, and that's how I start to go into track. Our usual track days consist of arriving May, probably the night before, find our spot, find the garage we want. I always have to have the garage I want. <laughs> we'll then have a bit of a barbie that night, have a few drinks with our mates, to have a chat with other riders that are there for the weekend or the day. Track riding has, has different elements to it. If I go back to when I first did my European track day, um, my friend James and I were there, just us two, and there were two guys in the garage with us, and we all got together um, there in Almeria, and by the end of it, we were all really good friends. And then ever since then, every track day I seem to do, we all go as a four now. Um, so I think there's a real sense of community with it. You make friends for life. Sharing it with friends, I think, is, is really cool when you have a, a bunch of friends that like to do the same. Um, sharing it with your couple, for example, in my case, my boyfriend also, he also rides. We tend to do, go on our track days with a group of friends um, and also we take our little boy Kobe with us as well. He comes in and he joins in with the fun now and, then, and enjoys it. So it's good if you can get a good group of you together to go and then enjoy the experience together and then bounce off afterwards. I think everyone's track day um, 
format changes. Uh, some people go the night before. I've certainly done the night before and stayed up and had a camp. So we usually head off to, track, to our track days with our van, loaded up with the bikes and all our kit, caravan on tow. Get there, I meet up with a mate. We try and share a garage. If we can't get a garage, we just stick a tent up outside the van. Get the bike set up, put on the warmers. It's that first session you try and get ready for. And for some bizarre reason, it doesn't matter how early you are, it's always a rush. Mornings, get up, have a bacon butty, and then don't talk to me. <laughs> Just do not talk to me <laughs> until I've had my first session. Once I've had my first session, it's okay, you can start talking to me again. <laughs> and then we can just have, have fun for the rest of the day. You wait for that first buzzer to go off to say, right, track group one off, group two, whatever group you're in, uh, off you go. And uh, it's always a rush, even after you know, the first group's been out, you still know yours is 20 minutes later. Um, it's always a mad rush. You're like, oh, right, get my leathers on, get my helmet on. Um, and then once you're out, you're out, and the day progresses, and you gradually dehydrate, get hungry, and then by the end of the day, you're absolutely knackered. <laughs> My riding on the road has been very, very different. So I, you feel more in control of the bike. You feel you can do many different things and you are not afraid of pushing some limits. Put all your gear together and get ready to have fun. We all have that soundtrack that is specifically for racing and you just put it and you just listen the songs and you're like, it makes you feel fast and you're like, yes, this is, this is what it is gonna push me into today. <laughs> My ritual is after the track day, I have to keep my wristband and I have to keep that wristband on for a good couple of days after. That means that the next track day I'll be happy and I'll be safe on because I kept my wristband from the last one. <laughs> uh, for me, it's a little fist bump with a mate before we go. It's a bit of a good luck charm. Um, that's, that's it for me. There isn't kiss my lucky egg or anything like that. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I try and keep it simple. A little fist bump with a mate uh, and then off you go. People that inspire me would have to be the racers. I'd love to be able to ride like them. I never will be able to, but I'd love to, and in my head, I do. Female racers, Maria Costello, Jenny Timmuth, great British girl racers. Those people you watch go round on the track and just think, wow, that's really cool to watch. They may not be the fastest, but they're just relaxed. Um, you just think, oh, I really want to be like that. You cannot describe the Isle of Man to somebody that has never been the buzz you get from sat on the side of a track and somebody coming past you at 190 miles an hour that close. The riders there are all heroes, whether they're first or last, to put, do what they do and put their lives on the line like they do is unbelievable. Before everyone is like, you need to put your knee down, but then nowadays when you see what the MotoGP riders are doing, you're like, no, no. I think the aim for everyone is like just go down and put your elbow down and just touch. And I think that's that's the aim. At some point, I'll, I'll do it. <laughs>